Welcome to the Totally Honest Cooking Show. I'm Mark. Today we're doing aged eggnog. This recipe is based on Alton Brown's recipe with very few changes, if any at all. But I am giving him full credit. Hey, Alton, I love you. Please don't sue me. Thank you. Anyway, let me move all this stuff out of the way and then we'll get started. So at this point, you may have some questions. Aged eggnog? Right, I know. It seems wild, right? We're going to make an eggnog and then we're going to stick it in glass jars either small or friggin huge for at least three weeks and up to a year or maybe even more there's nothing that says you can't store it for more than a year i never have i've never even drank it after one year because you know i worry more than necessary i have the anxiety hence the totally honest cooking show but the the idea is this right when you Go back to 1700, 1800, 1900. Eggs, in, at least in England, were something that wealthy people had, especially like for, co for cocktails. Eggs were, in cocktails were a fancy schmancy thing. The New World, uh, at least as early as 1900, there's documented people having eggnog on Christmas Day as a celebratory drink. But... According to at least one article that I read, chicken egg laying drops in the winter months. So, how did they have an egg rich drink to celebrate during Christmas time? The answer lies in aged eggnog. And you make this ahead of time, and then the amount of alcohol and sugar that you use round out the flavors, it mellows, it complexifies, and most importantly, it kills a salmonella, and it gives you a chance to have an egg-rich cocktail in the dead of winter. I'm going to go ahead and begin by separating 12 eggs. Yes, one dozen eggs separated. Now, because this is a beginner cooking show, we're going to go over how to separate eggs, right? You're separating the whites from the yolks, and you're using the yellow yolk part in this recipe. That's just called the yolk, but whatever. So we start by cracking our egg. Whatever bowl we landed over, I guess, is the one the whites are going in. And then we just do one of these. Now, try not to break it. Because if you break the yolk over the white bowl, it's not going to go into the yolk bowl. You can get the yolk in the white bowl without affecting your recipe. You cannot, however, get the white in the yolk bowl. Now I'm gonna show you that another couple times in case you're a newbie. I don't remember where I found this recipe or when I found this recipe. I know where I found this recipe. I got this from Mountain Brown, like I said at the top of the episode. I went through a period where I was really into good eats and I was, I made the meatballs and I made the mac and cheese and I made the taco potion number 19, which we might revisit later on is taco potion number 25. But I came across aged eggnog on his website when I was getting the recipes for the other stuff. And I was like, what the heck is aged eggnog? And then I read about the stuff that I just told you. And then I was like, well, that sounds cool. So that's what we're doing. So, yeah. Anyway. So, I'm going to keep doing this, but again, you're taking the egg, you're flopping it back and forth between two parts of shell, and then you're dropping it. See? Flop. Flop. Drop. Okay, I'm going to do that eight more times and then I'll be back. The eggs have been separated. You're gonna take the yolks and use them for this recipe. You're gonna take the whites and you're just gonna stick them over here. You can freeze these. If you wanna put them in the ice cube tray, you can do it that way. You could also probably put them in a plastic bag and roll it up and put it in the fridge. Or you can make the world's largest egg white omelet after this. I don't know, I'm not the boss of you. What we're gonna do from here is take a mix mixing bowl Set it there. This one has a rubber bottom so that it's not going to move around a lot. If you have one that will move around a lot, you might want to put a wet 
towel under it or something. We're just going to put our 12 yolks in there. At this point, you might be asking, Mark, why do you have another two dozen eggs? Well, that's because I've done the math and with all this stuff, it looks like the fancy bottles of liquor that I bought will make about three doses of this recipe. So I've got three of these giant glass bottles somewhere in this apartment and a whole bunch of these. I'm probably going to start with these just because there's no way I'm drinking three liters of this. But yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm going to start with my whisk and I'm going to whisk my eggs up. Now that my eggs look all mixed up, I'm going to add slowly a pound of sugar. Yes, you heard correctly. I said a pound of sugar. So we're going to turn my scale on. We're going to put our bowl on it. I'm going to hit the tear feature so that it zeroes out. Set it for pounds and ounces. Get my five pound bag of sugar. You probably won't need to be crazy about it, but we got exactly one pound of sugar here. We're also going to use a teaspoon of nutmeg. So I've got my nutmeg grater and I'm just gonna go, to, go ham on my nutmeg grater. Now, this is not an exact science. Don't feel like you need to be super exact. I just kind of shake it over the measure. We could also throw this in a, like a coffee grinder or something. Now that we have our teaspoon of nutmeg, we're going to whisk it in with some of the, with the sugar and the egg mixture and you'll know when it's done. Also, please note, don't go nuts with the nutmeg. Nutmeg is delicious, but it can kill you. Look it up. It can be, a, <laughs> it's surprisingly fatal in what I would call fairly small doses and it can act as a hallucinogenic. So, and not the fun kind of hallucinogenic. We're not talking like beavers and butthead licking toads. We're talking like you hallucinate and then you die. Uh, don't do that. So we're gonna pour this in a little at a time. Again, not rocket science. And you see how the sides, when they got the sugar, started changing color. You're basically looking through that color throughout and you're looking for the mixture to turn into a band, like a solid band. And if you're lucky enough to own a mixer, you can use a mixer. I usually use my KitchenAid for this, but I thought that because it's a beginner cooking show, why not do it by hand? Because, you know, when, when you watch a lot of these and you see people with fancy equipment that you don't have, it makes you feel like you can't cook, and that's not the case. Notice how it's solidifying. Notice how the yolk color is lightening and you can tell that it's getting close to done because it's getting stiff You see how it's falling off there as a band like a solid band. That's what you want. I'm just trying to get some of the Edge a little bit. Okay Now comes the fun We are going to mix our liquids. I'm gonna start with a cup of rum Dark rum to my cup of dark rum, I'm going to add a cup of cognac, or cognac, but certainly not cognac. That was satisfying. Let's do that again. <laughs> to my growing pile of liquor, I'm going to add one cup of bourbon. In this case, I'm using high rye bourbon with the hope that the high rye count will kind of bring out more sugar, I guess. I don't know. I've used these brands together before and I liked it. So I'm doing it again. Now, this does smell like death, just so you know. Now, I'm pouring this into a three liter container. We're going to take a pint of heavy cream, a pint of half and half, and a pint of whole milk. So that will be six cups in total. So two cups each, two cups. One of my wonderings at this point, Mr. Brown, if you're watching this for some reason, I've always wondered why you use milk and half and half and heavy cream. Why don't you just use six cups of half and half? I've always wondered. I have a feeling 
if I'm guessing that it has something to do with the pasteurization and how it's pasteurized and what happens with that. But I don't know enough about dairy processing to have a real opinion of that. And I'm kind of afraid to change it on my own because I don't mess around with stuff like that. Again, anxiety. That was the heavy cream and the milk. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in two cups of half and half. Also, you can just buy pint containers of milk half and half and heavy cream, and that will make this process easier. You won't have to measure it at all. I did do that for one of the mixes, so I will do that later. But the reason I didn't do it for all of them is because it is cheaper to buy a big container of heavy cream than it is to buy several smaller containers of heavy cream. Okay. So now we're going to whisk this together slowly. And try not to get it everywhere. And at this point, I'm going to realize that I needed to add a big pinch of salt. I probably could have done that sooner. And there you go. That's your nog. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in this three liter container. And now, in order to bring the process to a close, I'm going to pour it into this jar. And voila, as they say. Like I said, you're gonna store this for a minimum of three weeks. Different people argue about what the sweet spot is. Some people say the sweet spot is around six to ten to eight months. Some people say the sweet spot is more ten months to a year. I've never waited that long. The idea is that the longer you age it, the more it complex it becomes and the more it rounds out the edges. But there's got to be a cutoff or a within reason line. It's not just going to be drink this forever, it'll be fine. So I don't know what to tell you there, but I do know that I've got around three jars full of this. This is approximately three liters. I usually fill these three liter jars. This year I'm trying something a little different, but these definitely do work. You use it as a punch bowl and it's great for a holiday party. And I'm telling you this in October so that you have at least two months to age, if not more. And it's as easy as that. Like, subscribe, click the little bell, share it with a friend. It's glorious. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.